our sermon text here from, from 2 Kings chapter 2, the, the first 15 verses here. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know. Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. He replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit the double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. The company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed down to the ground before him. This is God's word. <clears throat> Grace, mercy, and peace are yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever met someone before that you'd consider legendary? It doesn't have to be somebody who's, who's famous to everybody else. Maybe this person is just kind of legendary in your mind or amongst a, a small, close-knit community of people. And, and probably there's a lot of different reasons why someone would be considered legendary, right? Uh, Maybe it's something they've done, some accomplishments that they've, they've made. Uh, maybe it was a specific way that they were, were gifted, uh, their, their talents. Uh, maybe it was their, their personality. They had kind of a larger-than-life personality, and, and they're, they're going to be remembered by, by you and, and maybe a few other people, too. Have you met somebody that's legendary? Do you know somebody like that? That, that was Elijah. That was Elijah to, to the, the company of the prophets who we'd consider like the, the, the seminary students of that, that day, right? That's the company of the prophets. Elijah was legendary to them. He, he was especially legendary to Elisha. He, he was legendary to the, the faithful believers at that time, and, and there's a good reason why. It, you know, and it's really hard to, to overestimate that, how, just how big Elijah was in their minds, because this was a, a guy who served as a prophet of the Lord, that was his position, but he set a great example in speech and in life, and the big moments of Elijah's ministry, <laughs> they were legendary to say the, the least. But, but now it's become clear to everyone that Elijah is going to be taken up into to heaven. His, his departure is coming soon, and no doubt the company of prophets, the believers of that time, and Elisha are going to feel that absence of Elijah now. They're going to feel like this is, is a hole for them. Uh, 
and, and Elisha is not looking forward to this at, at all, at, at this impending um, departure that, that Elijah is going to have. But they knew about it. The, the, the company of prophets, they, they come up to Elisha three times, right? They kind of sounded to get repetitive, started to get repetitive there in our reading. They, they know that Elijah's departing. Elijah knows that he's departing, and, and yeah, Elisha knows about it too. He doesn't really want to talk about it a whole lot. He says, just, just be quiet. I, I, I don't want to talk about this right now. I don't want to talk about Elijah leaving. And Elijah, uh, he, he's going to do a few things before he leaves, though. He's going to visit a few different companies of prophets in different places. And, and this is quite the travel, right? We're, we're, used to, we're used to cars that get us four miles in four minutes, right? Um, four miles, how long would it take you to walk four miles? Maybe if you're walking at a good, good pace, maybe a little under an hour, right? So he, he's going to walk from, let me see if I can get this up here. Uh, Gilgal is up near Shiloh here, so just a little bit north there. He, he starts in Gilgal, and he addresses the company of the prophets in Gilgal. He's giving his final words to the, the company of prophets before he's going to de- depart. Then he travels four miles south to Bethel. You see Bethel here? Four miles south does the same thing at Bethel. Uh, then he travels 14 miles uh, east to Jericho here. Uh, does the same thing at Jericho, and each step along the way, you remember what he said to Elisha? You can stay here. You can stay here. I, the Lord has sent me to these places, but you can stay behind. Now, if you were Elisha, and you knew what you knew was going to happen, would you have, have stayed behind? No way. This is the great prophet Elijah. You only got a, a little bit more time with this legendary prophet. You're going to stay by his side as long as possible and soak it all in. So from Jericho, they, they travel, five, it's about five miles to the Jordan River there, where Elijah does Elijah-like things. He rolls up, he takes his cloak off, he rolls up his cloak, and he hits his cloak against the, the Jordan River. And what happens? The water! It, it splits in two, and Elijah and Elisha are, are ready to cross on, are able to cross on dry ground. Amazing things. This is the kind of stuff that Elisha has gotten used to seeing from Elijah. So now that, that Elijah is going to be taken up into heaven, what do you think Elisha's feeling? What do you think are some of the emotions that are, are coming up in, in him? I know a lot of times I ask rhetorical questions, but I'm actually asking. Give me, give me a few. Shout out a few. What's he, what's he feeling? Deserted. Deserted. Elijah's going to be gone. Give me another one. Let down? Let down. Yeah, yeah. A little, dis- little disappointed, right, that, that Elijah's going to be gone. We don't know how old Elijah was. Maybe he, wasn't, maybe he wasn't that old, right? Give me one more. Angst. Angst. This, this, oh, you can feel that, right? He had to. He had to feel that, right? He had to feel all those things and, and, and more. There had to be some level of, of fear, some level of, of trepidation into what was going to happen next. He, he had to be worried, nervous. This was the, the guy who was his, his mentor in, in all things, right? This is the guy who had come up to him and called him into to ministry. And, and every part of his ministry had been carried out under the direction of Elijah. When Elisha like, didn't know what to do, who did he go to, to to talk to, to ask questions of? Elijah. That, that was his guy. Uh, when, when they were in a difficult situation, who, who took the lead? Who, who took the lead in those situations? That was uh, Elijah. Th- this was the, the, the great prophet who corrected Elisha when, when he did something wrong, and gave him encouragement when, when he was feeling down. He, he had to feel afraid. He had to feel a little bit of anxiety and angst and loss as he's about to, to lose his, his mentor here. And he had to be feeling some feelings of, of inadequacy. After all, this was Elijah. Comparing himself to Elijah? Come on, there, there's, there's no comparison there. This is the guy who had the courage to stand up to King Ahab, knowing what King Ahab could do to him, 
or the courage to stand up to, to Ahab's son, Ahaziah. Time and time again, uh, Elijah seemed to not be afraid. He seemed to stand in front of, of these guys and speak with great boldness the words of the Lord. Th- this is the guy who had the audacity to be the only one going up against 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah on Mount Carmel. He, he had the trust in God to do that. Of course, Elisha is feeling some some inadequacy here. Elisha knows his own heart. He he knows what the thoughts that are going on in his own mind. He knows the fear and the cowardice that lives in in here, in him. He knows the doubts that pop up in his mind from time to time. He knows himself, and he's no Elijah. Elijah. Fears like that, anxieties like that, angst like that it is pretty relatable, right? Uh, not just in ministry, in life. That, that sort of, of nervousness is something that we can relate to, something that we can understand. But, but I'm going to propose that, that perhaps, the, if this was a feeling that Elisha was feeling, it, that, that some of that is because we, we want control. We want control of things. Now, I'm making a, kind of a logical jump here, so, so let, me explain, let me explain what I mean a little bit. If, if Elisha is feeling this, this sense of angst, if he's feeling this fear and anxiety, could it be because he is forgetting... The source of Elijah's courage, the source of Elijah's trust, the source of Elijah's faith, the source of Elijah's power, that he's forgetting that that these things didn't come because Elijah was so great, but because Elijah's source was so great. Could this this feeling of, of inadequacy be because Elisha is thinking that, uh, he is in control of how his ministry goes, that, he, that everything is dependent on him, that, that whether he succeeds or fails in ministry, that's all on, on him and on his shoulders. Now, that has some real, thinking that way has some real consequences, right? So let's play those two things out, right? If uh, all of ministry's success and failures was reliant on Elisha, if he was in complete control of all of that, and things went really, really well, right? People were, were listening, people were repenting and turning to, to God. What, what would his natural conclusion be? I'm pretty great, huh? I'm awesome. I, I'm really good at this, this ministry thing, and, and all of this is happening because of, of me. Do, do you think that'd be good for Elisha's soul? Of course not. Of course not. That sort of, of, of pride chokes out a heart. That sort of pride pushes God right out of a heart. Okay, so play it up on the other side. If Elisha carries out ministry as if all of it relied on him, as if he was in control of everything, as if success or failure, that, that was on his shoulders, and ministry didn't go so well, People weren't listening, people weren't repenting, people were chasing him and trying to to kill him. What would his natural conclusion be? I stink, I'm awful, I'm a failure. Would that have been good for Elisha's soul? No, that that sort of despair casts a cloud over your heart and and it it can obscure your your view of, of just how good God is. I think there's some two big applications that we can make from this, and I, I kind of prefaced our, our whole service by this. We can make one application to ministry, to the work of our congregation, the work of Sure Foundation here as a whole, and we can make one application to our, our personal lives in, in specific. So that, that's what we're going to do. So here's the ministry one first. If our congregation believes that we are the reason for the success or failure of our congregation, if we believe that our programs 
or our personality is our secret to success, if we believe anything like that, we have supplanted the, the Word of God and Christ for ourselves. We, we have made ourselves a means of grace. We have elevated ourselves and we have demoted God, and that's a really, really dangerous thing. Uh, that's a really, really dangerous thing because that, that threatens our, even our sal- salvation when we think like that. And among the, the many dangerous and problematic things that, that come out of that, we'll be doomed to ride that roller coaster of control, uh, of pride when things are going well and despair when things are going not so well, and then pride again and despair again. We'll ride that roller coaster endlessly. But I think we can learn something from Elijah. We, we've now walked through Elijah's whole story or what we have recorded of him in, in Scripture. Elijah certainly wasn't a perfect person. He, he did set a good example in, in speech and life. And one thing that you can, you can get throughout the entire story of Elijah is that Elijah was under no delusion that ministry was about him. It had nothing to do with him. And it had everything to do with, with God. He knew that it was God accomplishing all of these things through him. He knew that it was God that was giving him the courage to stand up to Ahab and Ahaziah. He knew his own heart, and he knew that, that he was probably scared to stand in front of uh, Ahaziah and Ahab, but he knew the Lord was with him, and the Lord equipped him to carry out this task. It was the Lord who, who did these amazing things on, on Mount Carmel. It, he gave him the courage to be there in the first place, the, 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 the audacity to, to stand up to a large group of people, and, and he, in quite obvious fashion, was the the Lord was the one who, to open the heavens and, and light the sacrifice on fire. He knew it was the Lord who created that sort of trust in his heart in the first place through the work of the Holy Spirit. Elijah was under no delusions. It was all God doing all of that. And Elijah was the recipient of it. Elijah was just the, the instrument. And God was going to do the same thing for Elisha. Uh, Elisha, we, we don't know if he was feeling those things. We can, we can guess reasonably that, that he, he probably had all of those feelings and more. But, but the Lord was going to, to carry out the same sort of ministry through Elisha. He was going to use him as his instrument. And just because he wanted Elisha to be so encouraged, he gave Elisha a sign. So Elijah gets taken up into to heaven right? And he tells him, what did he tell him? He said, you will receive a double portion of my spirit if you see me taken from, from this, this world in the whirlwind, right? Elisha sees that. So that, that's one sense of encouragement that Elijah promised him, but no doubt the Lord is, is carrying this out, right? The Lord gave him this encouragement. Now, now he has the, the confidence, I have the double portion of, of the spirit that rested on Elijah, this prophetic spirit that was on Elijah. And then even more than that, though, God didn't stop there. He he picks up Elijah's cloak, he goes back to the Jordan, and that same miracle that he saw Elijah do just before, by by hitting the the cloak against the water and the water splitting in two, now Elisha does the same thing. You heard what he said, where is God? Where is God? And then he hits that against the, the water, the water split in two, there he is. God wants Elisha to know that he is with him and that he will carry out his ministry through him, that he will be his instrument. I'm going to guess you haven't hit a cloak against the Jordan River in the last month or so, um, and you you likely won't. But but God has done one better for you. Those are our two two little instances that that Elisha gets. God has given you his entire word. He, He has revealed himself to you in his word. And even more than that, in his word, he, he has told you that, guess what? You have received not, not Elijah's spirit. You've received the spirit, the Holy Spirit at your baptism. That's even better, right? He, he has given you the word that, that carries out this ministry, the word that he says is powerful, this word that, that creates faith in your heart and continues to strengthen that faith. He has given you all of those things so that you are sure 
that you are sure that God is with you and that you are God's instrument as well. Here's our ministry takeaway today as a congregation here. In ministry, as a congregation, when we grasp that the Lord is in control, then we can relinquish our want or desire for control and trust. No matter what we're facing, we've got a lot of big things ahead of us as a congregation, but no matter what we're facing, if we trust that the Lord is in control of this, we could take a step back and say, Lord, take it. Take it and bless it. Take it and work it out to your glory. And should he bless us with success, may we always remember that that's him. <laughs> that's the Lord doing that. The Lord accomplished that. And, and guess what? He used us to do it. And so our prayer is, take it, Lord, and use us. Don't you want a God like that to be in control? <laughs> We talked last week about how God is perfectly just and perfectly loving. God is perfectly powerful, he is perfectly wise, and he's perfectly loving. Don't you want a God like that to be in control? This is the God that created everything that exists. This is the God that holds all things together with his hands. <laughs> Just think of something as simple as, as how the planets orbit one another, right? These massive planets are orbiting, or, orbiting the sun here, and, and they have to, with such precision... They have to be held in that orbit so precisely for all of this to work. If they deviate just a little bit, things are ruined. But the Lord is the one holding all of those things in place, and not just the planets, but everything. If God can do that, if he has the power and wisdom to carry that out, don't you think that he can weave together history? Don't you think that he can weave together the, the events of your life to work everything out for your ultimate good? Don't you want a God with that kind of power and wisdom and control? Don't you want a God that is that loving to be in control of your life and this ministry of this church? That God who is so loving sent his only son to die on the cross. He reordered history. He, he ordered history just right so that at just the right time, he, he could send his own son into this world and give his own son up on the cross for us. Because he knew that doing that would save us from hell and give us heaven. He, he knew that that would give us what was ultimately our good, ultimately for our good. He's already accomplished that. Don't you want a God like that to be in control of, of the ministry of this church? The, don't you want a God like that to be in control of your life? I promised you a ministry application and a, a personal, specific one. But, but kind of sneakily, they're the, they're the same thing, actually. Here's the, the personal application. When you grasp that the Lord is in control, that, that the Lord is in control of your life, and that's a good thing. When you grasp who the Lord is and that he's in control of, of your life, then you can take a step back, no matter what you're facing, no matter how daunting that is or how uncertain it is, you can take a step back and say, Lord, take it. Take it and bless it. Take it and use it to your glory. And, and you know what? Use me as your instrument too. And should you grant me success in this life, let me remember that that's all you. God grant it. Amen.